Hi folks, Eric with Bailey Industrial and what we have here is one of our wood router tables. This is the WR84V. So this is our four foot by eight foot wood router table. And what we want to do here today is spend some time going over a few things on it, go through some of the functions and help answer any questions you might have. So the first thing that comes with the wood router are the wrenches for changing the tooling, the floating arm, which is going to ultimately hold the dust collection hose, the shroud that's going to bolt on top that's going to support that dust collection hose. These are the brackets that are going to hold that hose to the floating arm. Uh, eight different T-slots that come with for clamping material. The manuals for the table and controller. Four different collets, eighth quarter, three eighths and half inch. Uh, the bracket for actually holding the floating arm to the machine for the dust collection hose. A series of leveling pads that are going to help you level the table out. The bolts that ultimately bolt the brackets to the floating arm to hold the dust collection hose. And a series of tooling to get yourself started. So as you can see, this table is a fully welded constructed frame machine. Really the main thing we have to focus on assembling is the support system for our dust collection. Uh, main reason why that isn't on the machine is really for shipping reasons alone. Uh, that way nothing gets damaged. So we're going to break this all down and show you how it all goes together. So the first step in the assembly process is to attach our hose support bracket. It's pretty simple. It's held in by six cap screws that are on top of the spindle here. So we're going to go ahead and put this on. So now that the bracket's attached, we've connected our hose to it. We have the hose connected to the shroud as well. Next step is to attach the bracket on the side of the machine that's going to hold our floating arm for the rest of our dust collection hose. So now we have our bracket installed for our floating arm. Next step is to take our arm itself and lay it down. And what we want to do is lay our hose next to it. So we can get this all bolted to the arm. Okay, so now you can see we have our floating arm installed, which is going to swing with our gantry and keep our dust collection hose uh, nice and free. We have the hose connected. Uh, the next step we want to do at this point is take the shipping brackets off the gantry. Uh, there's a total of four of these mounted to the gantry and they mount directly to the chassis of the table itself right in this general area right here. So you want to make sure you remove these. They're both on the front and back side of the gantry. So the next step we want to do here is we're going to clean this table off and start looking at some other things. So the next thing we're going to discuss is the actual table surface itself. Now this table comes standard for T-slot clamping system and that's what this aluminum extruded track is. It comes with a series of T-slot clamps so it's ready to use in a clamping capacity. But this table is also pre-plumbed and ready to go to use a vacuum system in place where it's going to hold the material down. That pump system is an optional add-on unit that you can add at any time, but the zones that are in here are for that vac system. There's removable plugs to open and basically close those vac systems as well as shutoff valves for the specific zones and a seal around the entire zone to help aid in that suction. So the next thing we're going to do is get some material down on the table and we're going to hold that material in place using the T-slot clamps. Okay, so now we got material on the table and clamped and secure in place. Now we're going to turn the machine on and start going through some of the manual functions of the controller. So now that we have the machine on, the first thing you'll see on the controller is that it's asking to go back to its reference point, which is its home position, and that is in the upper left corner of the table. And to do that, we're just going to simply hit the OK button down here in the lower right corner of the controller and all the functions of the gantry are going to index off their proximity switches and return to home. So 
So now that we have the machined homed, now we can freely move the gantry around, around the table. And we're going to do that by using uh, some of the buttons on the controller. We've got our Y plus and minus, our X plus and minus, and our Z plus and minus. And so we're just going to hit our Y plus and move the gantry back. Our X plus, move it over to the right. And then we can hit our Z minus to bring the spindle down. And likewise, to return everything back, we can just hit the opposite for all those functions. So now we can move that gantry around and position it where we'd like on the, on the table. So one thing I want to point out here on the controller is in this right-hand corner where it says slow, and that's referring to the gantry speed. So when I move the gantry, everything's moving at a relatively slow speed. If I want to increase that, I can pretty easy just by hitting the zero button down here, and you'll see slow will switch then to high. And now when we move the gantry, everything is moving at twice the speed that it was prior. So that's an easy way for you to traverse the table relatively quickly or get the gantry out of the way when you want to change material. Another thing we can do on the controller is manually turn our spindle on and off. And that's done here by the number five key, or this little icon here, which basically means spindle on or off. Where the S off is on the controller, that means spindle off. So when I press the number five key, the spindle is going to get up to speed. And you can see that 7S value. And that gets up to speed. We can also, just by touching it again, shut our spindle off as well. So now that we've gone over some of the manual functions of the controller, let's put this all together. And basically what we can do is we can manually make uh, a cut on our material. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the spindle down closer to the material, not quite touching material, and I'm just going to turn my, my tool on or my spindle on and let it get up to speed. Then at this point, being very careful, I'm going to plunge my tool into the material and then move my gantry shut my spindle off raise my spindle up so the next thing I want to show on the controller is how we can change our spindle speed as it's cutting and our gantry speed as it's cutting and moving as well and it's pretty simple to do. First thing we'll do is is adjust and change our spindle speed. So what I'll do here first is I'll just turn the spindle on and again that spindle is going to ramp up to speed. So what I'm going to do here is adjust that and the way I do that is I hold the shift button down and I hit the number one or seven or the minus and the plus key. In this case we'll go down and you can see that S number changing every time I press it. And you can also hear the spindle dropping down in speed as well. And what we're doing is we're dropping lower in our RPM and basically affecting our spindle speed. And we can do this as it's cutting on the fly. So it's very, very adjustable that way. Same thing if we want to increase our spindle speed. We can hold shift down and hit the number seven key and increase our spindle speed as it's cutting as well. So another thing we can adjust on the controller is the gantry speed, how fast it moves. There's lots of flexibility there. And what we can do is affect that. Right now where it says 90% basically means is that we're running at 90% of our setting that we have in the controller. But we can adjust that as it's cutting on the fly. Basically how we do that is we hit our number one or our number seven key or minus or plus to affect that, that speed. So if I hit the minus you'll see it drop down by 10%. Now it's at 80, 70, and 60. And what that's going to do is influence the gantry and basically it's not going to move as fast. So that's another speed setting that you can do on the fly as you're cutting a program 
and fine tune your cut quality and really get a good part that way. So the next thing we're gonna show here is how to actually set our gantry speed. And we have two speeds that we're going to ultimately set. One is gonna be the actual speed that the gantry moves as it's cutting. The other is gonna be the speed at which it moves when it's traversing or traveling between cuts. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit our menu key right here. That takes us into the construct of the controller and we're gonna scroll it all into operation parameters and hit okay. And basically we're on our first speed right there. Our G00 speed is our gantry move speed between our cuts and we can change this very easy. So if we hit okay, it takes us into that field and we can make whatever adjustments we wanna make here. Let's say we wanna cut at 300 inches per minute and hit okay and hit okay again and that locks that in that field. If we go down to our GXX speed and hit OK there as well, we can change that speed. And that's our actual cut speed, how fast that gantry is going to move as it's cutting. Let's say we want to go a little slower. We can change it very easy just by pressing it in the controller here. We'll go to like 150 and hit OK. And then hit OK again to lock that in. So what we've done there is we've set the ceiling at which those speeds are going to move. Then what we can do is basically adjust those from there down at the controller as it's cutting, like we did in the manual program end of it. So the next thing we're gonna do is actually load a program into the controller. And to do that, I'm just gonna put the controller down for a second. The great thing about it is it's magnetic, so it holds on pretty much anywhere on the cabinet. So over here is where we put in our USB. That's gonna have our file on it. So when you plug your USB into the console, it will recognize that a USB has been plugged in and we can access it just by simply hitting OK. And then we can see all the files that we have on our USB. And then we can scroll through them and pick the file that we want to pick. Now to do that, we simply highlight the file that we want to select and we hit OK. And what we'll do is we'll get a little check mark next to that file. And then we'll hit the number one key to actually confirm it and load it into the controller. And at that point, that particular file is loaded into the controller and it's ready to run. So the next thing we're gonna do is move the gantry in place and set what's called our machine origin or our start point for our file. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the controller on high speed. And I'm gonna move our gantry up kind of in this, in this upper left uh, corner here. So now that we have the gantry in position on material, we need to basically set a origin or a zero point to start our program. So the first thing we wanna do is take our X and our Y value and zero them out. And to do that, we're just gonna hit the X, Y equals zero button in the middle here. And when we do that, it's gonna basically confirm that we're gonna clear these coordinates. And we're just gonna press okay. And then our X and our Y should be at zero. So that is our machine origin or the start of our program. So the next part of the origin process that we're gonna do is zero out our Z height on our spindle. Right now there's a value in there and we wanna zero that out so that everything makes sense on our program that we created. So we're gonna use our touch off pad that comes with the machine and we're gonna put that in place underneath our tool and we're gonna hit a series of buttons on the controller to make our tool come down and index off that pad. So now at that point, our tool is touched off and it's at zero and we're ready to start and run a program. So now that we have the origin set on the table, we can move our gantry around still and basically not lose our origin that we have preset. It's really easy to come right back to that same origin that we set. And to do that, we're gonna hold the shift and hit the number five key. And that's going to bring us right back to our origin that we had preset for our program. Another neat part of this controller is that we can save multiple different origins all over the table in the controller. So if you have a fixtured part that is cut to size and you have a jig that you need to put on the table, 
you can get that all pre-set up and basically return to that origin a month or weeks down the road and it'll be saved in the controller. And the way to do that is to hit the menu button and scroll down into operations and hit OK. And then scroll down further until it says origin list and hit OK. In here, if we hit the number one button, it says save. This is going to save our current origin. If we want to load a previous origin, we can hit the number two where the L and the D are next to it and we will load a specific origin. If we want to delete any origins, we can hit the number three and delete those origins out of this list. And as I scroll through here, there's a total of eight different origins that you can save in the controller. Call them up when you need, delete them as you need, change them as you need and resave them. So a real helpful tool. So another part of the controller I want to point out is the fact that you can go back in a program and select a specific line that you may have stopped on. Say for instance if you broke a tool or had some kind of error that you needed to stop the machine and needed to go back in the program, you can do that and it's pretty simple to do. You go into the menu function and you go into operations and hit OK and scroll down to line item number three where it says select line and hit OK. And the program that we have loaded in the controller has a total of 22 lines of code. And what we can do is we can scroll to the specific line that we want to start at, go down to where it says execute now, hit OK, and at that point the machine will back up in the program and start at that line. So really there's no way that you can really lose a tool provided your material doesn't move on the table. If you break a tool you should have no problem going back in the program and picking it up where it left off. Another part of the controller is that we can array our nest at the table. And to do that, we're going to hit our menu button again. And we're going to go down into operations, hit OK. And we're going to scroll down to where it says array. And we're going to hit OK. Here we can put in the number of rows we want of the part, how many columns we want, and the spacing between those as well. So we can set that up at the, at the table. So that's a real cool and, and neat feature to have. So that'll do it for the WR48V. If you have any questions on this machine or any of our other products, check us out at Bailey.com. Thanks for watching.